Hello, my name is Guilherme Pacheco and I work as a teacher trainer for Cultura Inglesa in Rio. We're starting a new series of videos which discusses the links between neuroscience and education. The first video in the series is about the importance that this field has for language teachers. Check it out! With the advancement of brain mapping, our understanding of how the brain works has exploded. As a consequence, neuroscience began to play a major role in education, particularly thanks to the so-called neuroeducators. Learning how the brain works is not necessarily easy, so what neuroeducators do is they try and bridge the gap between the classroom and science. There are good news and bad news coming from neuroeducation. Let's start with some of the good news. A lot of what science knows about the learning process corroborates what good teachers and experienced teachers have known all along. For example, the idea that students need to be challenged. This is not necessarily new. For instance, Lev Vygotsky, the uh, Russian psychologist, knew this all the way and he was the very first one in the, way back in the 1930s to propose the idea that the students learn better when they are at their ZPD or zone of proximal development. Another significant idea has to do with the role of emotions in language learning. We all know that negative emotions such as stress can have a very detrimental effect in the learning process. Well, for those of us who studied languages, this is not necessarily new, because we picked up the same idea from the American linguist Stephen Kreshen. In the 1980s, Kreshen proposed a series of seven hypotheses for language acquisition. One of these included the idea of an effective filter. Basically, what Kreshen was trying to suggest is that in order for acquisition to take place, we need to keep anxiety in the classroom to a minimum. Today, neuroeducators confirm that Kreshen was right in his assumption. But where exactly are we falling short of expectations? There are a number of neuro myths that teachers would need to address, and one of them is related to multiple intelligences. The idea is that teacher needs to focus on what the students are strong at. For instance, if you have a group of musical students, that you should be teaching them through music. Neuroeducators are helping us see that this is not exactly the case. If our students are strong musically speaking, this means that they have already developed their, their, their neuro pathways in that area. So what a good teacher should be doing is trying to help those students develop other neuro pathways. In other words, he should be focusing on other intelligences. By being able to relate their practices to a higher scientific truth about the brain, teachers will also feel more confident about their teaching. Well, that's it for today. Keep posted on the videos about neuroscience and education. If you have any questions, any comments, leave your questions and comments here. We'll be more than happy to include your ideas in future videos that we produce. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel by clicking on the screen here. You'll be notified every time we put a new video up. Bye for now.